All right, well, thank you for joining us on, on today's session, The Profit First Agency uh, with Michael Tasker. Uh, I'm super excited to unpack this in more depth. Um, this is really based on the, the book called Profit First by Michael Michalowicz. Um, I think it's one of the best books on accounting that's come, you know, come out in the last 20 years. Um, and it really kind of flips revenue and profitability on its head. Um, I read the book years ago. Um, I sat through a live session with Mike Mokalowicz explaining it to me. Um, and I, I didn't really get it until the last time I saw him about six months ago at an event. Um, and he kind of just told it again and he explained it again. And I was like, yes, like this is critical that if you can start to look at your accounting like this, where you put profit first and it's baked into every dollar that you make within your business, um, everything works better, right? You get, you're able to make more money. You're able to be happier. You're able to really keep your motivation and, and inspiration going within your business. And so, you know, I was like, man, I, I got to teach the seven figure agency members about this concept and really get them to implement it in their business. Because, you know, if you can make more money and be more profitable, you're going to win, you're going to be happier. Uh, but, you know, as someone that has just read the book and implemented it myself, I really wanted to make sure I found someone that owned the concept that has gone deep with it. And so um, Michael Tasner has been a member of Seven Figure Agency for how long has it been now, Michael? Probably going on three years? Yeah, I believe we're going on year three. Year three. Grown to seven figures over the last couple of years for the second time in his business. Um, and he's gone deep on this concept. He, he's actually a profit first certified consultant. And so I was like, who better to bring on and kind of teach this concept than him? So, Michael, thanks so much for agreeing to come on and kind of unpack your, your learnings with the group. So before I dive in, like anytime I have a guest, I, I like to really think through and make sure that I'm solving a specific problem within your agency. It's something that's really kind of mission critical. And what I find with most digital marketing agencies, myself included, is that we have a tendency to focus on the, the top line instead of profit. We think about, oh, how much revenue, how much recurring revenue, how much money did our agency make, right? Our agency did four and a half million dollars. And it's like, okay, great. And when you focus on the top line, it's exciting. But at the end of the day, are you more interested in having a sexy number or are you more interested in having actual money that you keep, right? The actual uh, profit that you get to put into your own bank account or invest in things for yourself. I'd love to hear from you guys in comments. What's more important, revenue or the amount of money that you get to keep, right? And, and the reality is, the, the profit is really what matters, right? Revenue, revenue is vanity, profit is sanity, right? So we want to really be thinking about, Mark Lewis says cash in my, prop, uh, my pocket. Chris says profit, absolutely. And the tendency that a lot of us get into is to constantly think, and, and we think rightfully, we should be reinvesting in the business, right? We're gonna go out, we're gonna land clients, and in order to grow, we have to invest in marketing. We have to invest in team. We have to invest in systems. We should be investing in our training, right? And we think that we're doing the right thing by constantly plowing back the revenues and the proceeds from the business into growth, right? I, we did this for ourselves for years. It was like, okay, you know, we got to a certain level. Um, now we're gonna go hire some people. And we, you, know, you make a choice with every dollar that you make. Are you going to keep it, right, for yourself and pay yourself what you need to get paid? Or are you going to, to reinvest it? And what often happens is if you get into this habit of constantly reinvesting into the business, um, you don't get to pay yourself. And eventually that burns you out, right? And have you ever experienced this, Michael, where like you were just reinvesting in the business over and over and over and over, thinking eventually you're going to get to pay yourself a profit. And it really just demoralizes you. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, it, it's one of the biggest problems I see agency owners facing and especially when you're just starting out and, and you're like, well, someday, someday we'll get there. Someday we'll get there. Um, and then obviously that then spirals and affects other areas of your life. So, I mean, if you're not making profit and you're, I mean, a lot of you have messaged me in the last week or so, just after seeing the topic and you're like, well, I'm, I'm the main breadwinner or whether you're a male or female. And I take a step back and say, I mean, if you were, if you're the main breadwinner and, and you're not putting profit first, you're really in trouble. I mean, if you're plowing money back, I mean, how can you pay your bills? And it's, that's when stuff really starts to go south. So. No doubt. No doubt. And so the other thing I see happen often when it comes to, to our agencies and, and, and you know, this, this is kind of rampant in the industry is, is flying blind and not knowing where the money went. 
right? Where, you know, it's just, you invest in a tool, you invest in a, a person, you hire someone on Upwork, um, you're generating money, but you have no idea where the money went. And if you don't know where the money went, it's gone, right? It went into the ether. And so really, if you can't get these things under control within your business, if you've got the wrong mindset around your money and how much money you should keep within profit, if you've got a mindset that you should just constantly be reinvesting in the business instead of paying yourself and keeping a healthy profit, and you can't get your financials under control, you're going to wind up doing a lot of work with very little to show for it. Like you won't be able to pay yourself correctly. And the value of your business at the end of the day is often based on the profit that you retain within the business. And so there, there really is a, a very exciting opportunity because, you know, if you can get this under control and you absolutely can just by changing the way you think and putting some tools in place, which Michael is going to share with you on today's session, you know, really you can focus on your profit first and make that the priority within your business. You can take control of your finances and it doesn't have to be as hard as you think in terms of budgeting, just by changing the way you structure your bank accounts, change the way that your money flows within your operation. You can kind of hack this whole process of making profit, on a consistent basis, which really is what's going to help you build wealth and grow your bank account month after month, week after week, year after year. And ultimately, you can really have profit from this day out within the business. I think Michael's going to give you a very clear plan to make sure that you make a profit next month, the month after that, and, and from there on forward. So if you're excited about that, post in comments and let me know, you know if you're excited about having a profit and knowing that you can control and get a profit uh, from now on. I wanna you know, get a thumbs up in the Facebook group or give me a yes. Okay, I'm giving you a bunch of yeses coming in. Um, and so from here, Michael, I'm gonna hand it off to you. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and now you should be able to share your screen. There we go. All right. All right. Can everyone see the screen? All right. I'll move Josh's head to my other screen here. All right. So I want to start with the challenge and let's throw this out there. So uh, respond on the chat, but let's play a real quick game. So let's say that you just launched your agency and for the first 30 days, you brought in $1,000, okay? So $1,000 top line. Uh, type in the chat, um, give me the breakdown of where did that $1,000 go? So I'm gonna give you a minute or two, but where did that 1,000 bucks go? H how did it get spent? Uh, so I'm gonna monitor on my, my other screen here and just kind of watch for the chat, Let's bring it over here. Um, <laughs> I like that comment. Uh, I would have lost 47 K. Uh, <laughs> That's not good. What uh, that, that wouldn't. So uh, again, let's just uh, play with it a little bit. Thousand dollars. What is, what does the breakdown look like? Um, so I'm just going to, again, give everyone a, a second. So, and this is just a hypothetical. Uh, so Don would have said, he said 30% expenses rest to me. Got it. Um, Anthony, 50% pay 50%. I'm not sure where the other piece would go. Uh, Mark said payroll subscriptions, Keith, VA, uh, marketing cost. Okay. Got it. Anthony white. All right. 50% would be white label. Okay. And it doesn't matter if this is a thousand dollars for a website or a thousand dollars for paid traffic or SEO. So that we're just, just brainstorming here. Um, third ad spend, third fulfillment, third profit. All right, so I, I, I like Josh's. So um, what I didn't hear on here, so a few of you, uh, look at the, the last, sorry, $500 subcontractor labor, that's uh, a little bit more than uh, than 1,000, but $800 VA, $200 for you. Uh, the best answer on here, uh, and I, I apologize, I don't make sure, I don't wanna butcher your name, um, I believe it's Isidore. Um, so 10% taxes, 20% profit, 50% expenses, 20% slush. So you were the closest. Mm. So what I, when I tend to throw this exercise out, and I'll give you again my backstory in just a second, but I like to start with this. Rarely do I ever hear taxes, profit, 
or owner's pay. So it, it traditionally is if I had a thousand dollars, maybe I'd take a hundred bucks, two hundred dollars, but usually it's all of the other stuff that, well, I'm going to have to pay a VA, I'm going to have to hire a, a designer, uh, I'm going to have to all, all the overhead, whatever it is. Um, that tends to be what I hear first. Um, only one person out of every single one of you mentioned taxes, which is um, uh, among my least favorite. Uh, areas to put money, but I will give you some tactics and some tips on here to try and minimize some of that stuff as well, but that's not necessarily the focus. So we're gonna go over three key things. So what is this whole pay yourself first methodology? Um, why most of you are currently doing this exact thing, and this is how I, I used to do with my first agency, bank balancing. So you log in, you look at your bank account, is there money there, yes or no? And that's how you make your decisions. And what do you actually do from here? Like, what, how do you take this? How do you implement it, um, et cetera? So a few stats, and I, I don't like to be the Grim Reaper, and I, I don't wanna necessarily uh, tell you things that you already know, but when I look at the stats of small business failure, most of you know the stats are, I mean, completely grim. So we've got, I mean, 34 people that are on this live. I'm sure more people that are listening. I'm sure there'll be a few hundred people, if not more, that re-listen to this. 50% of you are going to be out of business traditionally within the first year. Hmm. Just vapored. Most small businesses do not succeed. Now, if you get past year two or year three, those rates then start to change a little bit. But what, what's interesting, when I really started looking into it, because there's there's all these stats and I mean, we're all marketers on this call. So I mean, a lot of us in, invent stats uh, on the fly and do, oh yeah, uh, X percent and oh, yeah, Facebook is gonna drive you 19.4% of your trend or your revenue. I mean, we, we're great at making up stats on the fly. And there are tons and tons of stats of what's the small business failure or success rate. Every single number is very, very grim. But the number that I was completely shocked by was of the 50% of businesses that then actually stay in business, only 40% of those businesses actually turn a profit. Wow. 40% turn a profit, 30% break even, the other 30% are losing money. So even if you pass this rate and you're actually among the, the stat, so if any of you have been in business for more than a year and, and you've made a little bit of profit, uh, I commend you, you're in, in the, the green, um, but the, the stats are just so darn grim and it really kind of ties into kind of my story. So this is my second agency as Josh said. So I, I launched an agency when I was 15 and that was uh, my first agency and I, I was able to grow it to seven figures, but candidly I did every single thing wrong. So not only all the stuff that Josh teaches and the, and the methodology of having a niche and everything else, um, I did it all wrong. I had give or take 50 clients at $2,000 a month, give or take. I'm rounding sim simple math. I mean, they were, some are $500, some are 10,000. I mean, they're all the, a month. I mean, all different numbers, 40 plus different niches. And I ended up running out of cash and everyone's like, how the hell did you, I mean, doing a hundred K hundred and some months, 150, some months, 80. I mean, the, the numbers are all over the place, but a couple things happened. The first, it literally ran me into the ground and that combined with the money stuff almost put me in my grave. Like I, I literally would be, lying in bed, staring at the ceiling, wondering how the heck am I going to make payroll? Uh, can I put it on my Amex again? Uh, can I ask the, the people to delay payroll? Uh, the, my Amex bill was mounting and I just couldn't figure out for the life of me how the heck to manage my cash. And it wasn't just about managing it, but it was what I would do was literally log into my business bank account and I would look at the top line number. Okay, great. There's 140 grand in the account. That looks awesome. Uh, I believe that my expenses for the next month are like 80. So um, there's 60 grand that that's essentially I could take for myself if I wanted. 
So then what I, I started doing was taking more money for myself. So I'd take an extra five grand here or 10 grand here on top of my salary. So I started taking random distributions because I thought just in looking at that high number that there was plenty of cash. But as the numbers then continued to grow, so as my revenue went from 30 grand a month to 50 to 80 to 100, et cetera, then I continued to spend more. So now I need to upgrade X and now I can hire an admin assistant and a fancier bookkeeper and a nicer office. And it's like there was never enough. And that ultimately led to the demise. Um, I, I probably could have survived had I laid off a lot more people and kind of rebuilt it. Um, but the whole financial piece combined with my energy just really crushed me. Like it literally crushed me to the ground, working 80, 100 hour weeks, no family life. So I so ended up selling the agency um, because I was not highly profitable, even though a top line was a million dollars plus, um, I, I ended up walking away with essentially a year's salary. Um, so, and not an amazing salary um, as well. So I mean, agencies traditionally sell for a, a lot higher valuation than that. But when they're analyzing it, when I was analyzing, I'm like, geez, I wouldn't even buy my own agency. Like I, I, there's cash literally falling out the windows. So sold that agency and I started up No Joke Marketing um, after my non-compete expired. And I vowed for this agency to do things differently. And that's why I joined the seven figure agency. Um, that's why I'm, I'm putting other things in place. But one of those things was profit first. And I took it a step further and selfishly speaking, I actually became a profit first consultant just to help my business so that I knew this stuff inside and out. Um, and after talking to Josh, He's like, why don't you come and do a presentation? And, and if there's some ways you can help some of the agencies um, continue to grow and help with their profits, uh, it, more power to you. So um, I decided to kind of help not only train and teach and see if there are some ways that I can help you further. So um, that's kind of the backstory. So when I look at kind of the, the top level, and I, I always, I love analogies. So I'm not the most fit person in the world. Um, but, um, it, it's all based on kind of having a healthy lifestyle very quickly translates to having a healthy business. So we're going to talk about kind of some analogies between the two and being physically fit is very, very similar to being financially fit. We're going to look at small plates. We're going to focus on the veggies first. We're going to remove temptation. So like taking the ice cream and the cookies, and we're going to have a system where it's essentially an autopilot so that you're not going back to the temptation and doing what most of us do. And I, I'm sure um, if I were to, and I'll just ask the question and feel free to say yes or no on, on the chat, but I mean, how many of you are going in and then you're transferring extra money from the bank that let's say you were paying yourself quote unquote five grand a month. How many of you at random or as needed then go into your business bank account and hit transfer to your personal account or cut yourself a check on a random basis? So I'd, I'd love to hear from just simply a, a, a yes or no on, on the little chat there. Never have, well, that's good. Um, Couple yes. Of yes, um, I, I used to do it as well. So I would challenge most of us that, that you're gonna go in there and you're gonna grab something extra. So step one, small plates. And it, it's all about portion control. So we wanna have, instead of having this one overarching account, so to speak, where all of your money is sitting, we're gonna to start to look at this like you're gonna have a couple of small plates. And I'm going to show you how you're going to shift your money around, how often you're going to do it. I'll give you some numbers to work with, but it's all about moving from having one large plate to having lots of little plates. Oops, hit the wrong button. Sorry. Um, is anyone familiar with Parkinson's law? So I actually wasn't um, until I started studying profit first, but um, Anyone familiar with Parkinson's law? 
It's not a marketing term. <laughs> not seeing not seeing any yeses. So I didn't know what this was, but after I, I learned about the law, it made complete sense. So Parkinson's law essentially says that whatever is in front of you, you're going to use. So I got a graphic of a toothbrush. So if you put a small amount of toothpaste on your toothbrush, you're gonna use the small amount. If you have a huge gob of toothpaste, like the graphic you're looking at here, traditionally you're not going to push it off and use a smaller amount. You're going to use what's in front of you. So um, a lot of us as agency owners, I'll, I'll give you an analogy to an agency owner, is let's say that you give somebody a rough quote of $10,000 to do, to do a new website. Chances are that if that's the quote you gave, even if it comes in closer to 5K or 7K, you're going to make sure that that quote of 10K, you use the resources up for that 10K. That's not just because of you wanting to extract the most value, but it's Parkinson's law. If you have three months to do a task, chances are you're going to get it done right before the three month mark. You're rarely gonna have that done within a week or a month or something like that. So when I started thinking about Parkinson's Law in my business, if I had $100,000 in revenue, that $100,000, regardless of if that was good or not, was gonna get eaten up. So if I had them, well, now we can go buy but when someone on my team way back when had the idea we, that we could attract more clients by having the best cup of coffee in Buffalo. And I'm like, all right, great. So he went and bought like some $4,000 coffee machine, all these fancy beans. And I'm like, then when I, I, I stopped to think, I said, when was the last time we even had a client in our office? I think we had a client like one time in two years. So we didn't even service Buffalo, New York, even though we live here, all of our business was out of state. And, it's this whole Parkinson's law of, well, I had the money there, so I thought that I could just eat it up and use it. So that's why when we go through this, we have to eliminate those temptations and take the behavior. It, it is completely behavior-based in order to change this stuff. So here's the whole small plates methodology. So the first plate, I like to call it um, the income plate. And this income plate, you could call it um, the serving tray. So this is where all the food is kind of coming. This is where everything is going to initially go in. And this is traditionally where most of us traditionally keep everything. So you traditionally have everything at your serving tray. Everything goes in income, and then everything comes out of income. So what we're gonna do here is you're actually gonna end up with anywhere between six, and I actually have 12 uh, different bank accounts. And the first one, my favorite is the income bank account. And all of your money is going to go there first. So all of your checks, all of your, if anyone's ever paying you cash, all of your credit card payments, everything is going to go into the income bank account first. So most of you already have at least one bank account, possibly a second. So you don't necessarily have to then replicate the income. You can leave that one as income. The next step though, and I, I'll come back to this and we'll keep talking more about it is whether it's your bank, I actually prefer credit unions. I found that they're a lot more friendly to Profit First um, because this instance, uh, can you hear me okay, Josh? Yes. All right, Josh Wheeler said, did Mike freeze up for anyone else? Am I still, everything's still working all right for everyone? I'm having you fine, I'm having you fine so just keep going. All right, thank you. Sorry, Josh, you must be on your side, Josh Wheeler. Um, so the other accounts, you're going to open is a profit account, an owner's pay account, tax account, and operating expenses. So these are traditionally 
the main accounts that you're going to start with. Now, this can expand, but it, it cannot subtract. And what I mean by that is these are the bare minimum accounts that you want to look at. Income, profit, owner's pay, tax, op expense. And on the next slide, I'm going to, it'll make a little bit more sense. But what we're going to do here is everything is going to flow into your income account. And I'll, I'd like to keep the math simple. So let's say you've got $10,000 a month of income. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set up predetermined percentages where the income account is then going to get distributed twice a month. And I'll talk about what days because there's a scientific formula behind everything. And I've tried all different things as an agency owner uh, to break the system, uh, to retool it. But I started off about two and a half years ago with this exact system of accounts. And then I've started opening up additional ones. Now you might be saying, well, where, where's the other bank account that he's talking about? I'll show you that in a second because we're actually going to move money around to really solve your whole temptation. Can so I, again, can I pop in for a sec? Please. So this concept to me, when I first heard it, I got it in principle, but I was like, oh, I'm creating all these extra accounts. Um, I don't really see at the end of the day how that's going to change anything. And it wasn't until I really got this idea of Parkinson's law is that if you've got all of your money sitting in that income account and you're paying your expenses out of the income account, by, that, by the nature of that law, you're going to spend it all. And by taking it out into these separate accounts right off of the bat, that's how you can carve out your profit, carve out your tax and your owner pay. I just wanted to make sure that was clear to everybody that you know it's not just creating extra work. The reason you create these accounts is because it makes it so that you force yourself to be more efficient with the money that you have. Exactly. I mean, and it's the system at a high level is similar to this whole concept of pay yourself first, but I would, similar to what I did earlier, I would challenge most of you that are on the line to see, do you actually pay yourself first? Very few of us actually do. Your money comes in and then everything is instantly going out. You're paying your mortgage, you're paying your kid's daycare, you're paying for your internet, yourself, all of that stuff goes out. And then if there's anything left over, we're literally completely reversing the entire methodology of this whole notion of money comes in. So income comes in, all of your expenses equals what's left over, your profit. The whole piece of this it is we've got to make sure that the owner is taken care of first. And that is really a couple of you have paying me saying, well, I haven't been taking any pay. I haven't, I, this business, while we're all here to serve, there's no point for you to stay in business if the business is not serving you. Every one of our businesses needs to be serving us first. And if we don't put these things in, and I tried not putting these bank accounts in place, and I tried just changing the way that I was doing my billing and invoicing, and I, I tried everything to actually not do this, this is the only way that I have been able to completely retool my finances. And that's when I went all in with profit first. So this next slide, and I'll appreciate the clarification, Josh. You said it, I was just restating it. Um, so again, no, no, you're, you're fine. Um, so the income comes in and then we're gonna have these different bank accounts that are then going to move the money based on certain percentages. And that's the next slide I'm going to show you. So you're gonna have this income account all the money is going to go in there and it's going to sit in there until two times a month. Then what you're going to do is based on percentages, you're going to move money to profit. You're going to move money to the owner's pay. You're going to move money to your tax account out of every agency that I've analyzed their financials. Um, this is the one account that rarely any of you put any money in sadly. And I, I'd be lying to you if I wasn't the same way. Uh, so up until I started doing profit first, I was hoping that I could at the end of the year or in January, I could get a client to prepay for the whole year. And for two years in a row, um, I was able to do that. So I don't know, like a 20 or $30,000 account. So I would get that money in and okay, great. Hopefully that was enough to cover my tax bill. 
I never set any money aside for taxes. And that unfortunately gets a lot of us into some challenges if all of a sudden there's nothing left over for Uncle Sam. So this next slide is all about small plates. And I, I'm going to make it a, a little bit larger on, on this next screen because I know that uh, yeah, Uncle Scam, I like that one. <laughs> um, so I, I wanted to blow this up a little bit. So I know it's a lot of percentages, but let me talk you through this. So if you're in basket A, and let's, again, for simple math, let's say that your, your revenue is $10,000 a month, so $120,000 a year, top line revenue, okay? The percentages, and these are all ideal percentages that I've designed based on where I'd like to see agencies go. So I've taken all the profit first stuff and then kind of morphed it to fit agencies. If you're anywhere below 250K in revenue, these are the percentages that I'm suggesting. So let's stick with 120K a year, $10,000 a month. So owner's pay should be at 60,000. 5% of that would be profit. 15% you'd be putting aside for taxes and 30% would be for OPEX. Now, depending on how your agency is operating currently, these numbers could be completely out of whack. Usually they are, or they could be close to spot on. Again, most of you, if you're bringing in 10K a month, you're typically not putting aside $1,500 a month for taxes. You're also very rarely have I seen any agency owner, and that's the whole concept of profit first. I have seen very few, if any agency owners ever take profits other than at the end of the year. And I'm not talking distributions, I'm talking profit. And you might say, well, that, that's Michael, that, that number is really tiny. If I'm bringing in $10,000 a month, for example, I mean, that's not a big number. However, it's this whole habitual piece of, I want you taking your profit first and your owner's pay before these other accounts get funded. Now, this often can set people into a panic for one of a couple of reasons. <clears throat> Excuse me. So one reason is that traditionally with agencies, if you're doing under 200K, usually I see um, owners pay often 60, 70, even 80%. And you might push back to me and say, well, Michael, what, what's wrong with that? The challenge with that is that you have no way to then scale if you're having to do all of the work. The only way that you're able to be taking that kind of owner's pay is if you have insane margins or you're having to do the lion's share of the work. You're also then traditionally not putting money aside for taxes. And if you're taking... 80% is going to your pay, that 15% number is going to be massively understated. So if you were paying yourself 9K out of 10K a month, for example, and let's just say you didn't have any operating expenses, you were doing all the work, everything. $1,000 is not going to be enough to cover your tax account because you're going to be having to pay tax on that full $9,000. So unless you're able to come up with all these other uh, surprise uh, tax breaks and write off your car and your third unborn and all these other things, you're going to have a tax liability that you didn't plan for. So the goal in looking at these numbers is as your business scales, so then as you move to the 250 to 500 K, you'll notice that the profit number goes up the owner's pay number comes down. And traditionally, as your business gets in this range, usually the number that you're gonna be operating around in terms of op expense is around 40%. But again, the piece that I wanna repeat is that these two right here 
out of everything on this sheet, and yes, tax is important, the first thing when we do these um, payments or movements twice a month is you're going to move to the profit account first, the owner's pay account second. Now, again, a lot of you might be thinking, well, this is fine and dandy, but my op expenses are 60%, I'm taking 40%. So at the end, I'll tell you about a, a one real simple way that I can help you. Um, and, and it's really putting a plan to start to get to these numbers. It took me about a year to get to the point where I was able to take the owner's pay that I had wanted. Um, it also took me about six months before I could get my profit up uh, to 15%. Um, so I initially started off at 1% and then I continue to taper it. Um, so it, it will take time to get you to these levels, but it's a complete mindset shift of, I need you taking your profit out of the top first, your owner's pay, putting some money aside for Uncle Sam, and if there's not enough left for op expenses, well, then we need to work together to find out why your op expenses are kicking your butt. Because that's the other thing. I, either I see owner's pay is exceptionally high because that you're doing all the work, which again is not a terrible thing as long as you are putting money aside for taxes, an appropriate amount. And if you only want to be an agency that's doing a couple hundred thousand dollars a year and maximizing your pay, that's completely fine, but you still have to make sure then that that tax number gets adjusted. But the OPEX number, that tends to be the one that if I don't see really high revenue, or excuse me, really high owner's pay, I see really high operating expenses because all of us are addicted to XYZ tool and now we wanna, we have, and I have it too, we have the shiny object, object syndrome where we're literally buying every new tool and oh this training is out and that training and oh well uh, we got to go buy this now and i need the latest macbook and if you're not budgeting for those things I, i've seen op expenses where they're 70 percent of your business now they can continue to rise as your business gets larger um but it's again these these numbers can be kind of noodled around a little bit. Um, I've seen a lot of agencies what even as they, they cross the million dollar mark, um, the owner's pay is 20%. Um, they're at the 15% tax number, but their operating expenses are still at 40%. I mean, it, it varies based on the different agencies. Um, I run a, a virtual agency. Um, so Josh has a, an office, but I know Josh, you run pretty lean as well. Uh, and highly profitable, it, as well as great compensation for you and your partner. So it, it varies based on the agency, but these are numbers to give you something to at least plan for. So the whole veggie analogy, eat your veggies first, profit, owners pay. So when that $10,000 comes in, for example, you're going to move 5% to that one new bank account that you had set up labeled profit, and then you're going to move your owner's pay. Those are the two that I'm most concerned by. So all of your deposits are going to flow into income. And then what you're going to do then is you're going to move based on percentages. You're going to move X percentage to profit, X percentage to owner's pay, X percentage to tax, X percentage to op expense. Now I showed you the recommended percentages, but there's never been a time when anyone can just come in and just start doing the recommended stuff ever. I, I, it took, as I said, it took me six months to get the, the profit piece um, and a year and a half to get the owner's pay to, to where I needed it. Um, so it takes time, but it's the, even if you start off taking 1% of profit, it's the act of your money flowing into the income account. So you can very easily see your top line. And then you're then going to flow twice a month into 
the proper accounts. So it's this whole piece of sales minus expenses does not equal profit. It's this whole Frankenstein formula that you were kind of trapped in looking at. It's this whole bank balance accounting issue of, well, I'm just logging in and looking in and seeing what are the bank balances. You have to get in the flow of removing the temptations, removing the traps so that it's your sales minus your profit equals the expenses. $10,000 comes in, $500 moved to your profit account. That is then what's left over. You're then taking your profit first. The business is serving you as the owner rather than everything else getting eaten up. It's the behavior piece. Uh, and Don, I'll, I'll answer your question in, in just a minute. Um, it's the behavior and it's not, this isn't logical. And as Josh said, it took him some time to, to get it. Once I started it, everything really started flowing. Um, and I got out of this whole, okay, $10,000 minus expenses equal whatever is left over is what I get to completely reverse engineering. Now, the other piece that I will tell you that I did not do initially was I didn't remove the temptation. Like I, I my wife, I've got the worst sweet addiction and that's probably why I'm not as healthy as I should be, like addicted to sweets. So I had told you earlier of, you need your income account, your profit, operating expenses, taxes, et cetera. The downside is if you do not then remove the temptation, you're going to do what I promise you that all of you have done is you're not going to do this. So this is probably, I mean, there's a lot of great slides on here, but I needed to then take it a step further. So I set up five accounts at one credit union Again, I actually have 12, but I'm not going to get into all the, the advanced stuff. So I have other accounts where I actually move um, payroll into another account. I have another account for subscriptions. So I, I took this to the nth degree. But what I found was if you keep everything at one credit union or everything at one bank, five accounts, I promise you what you're going to do is you're going to move money. So you're going to log in at random and you're going to say, well, shit, I, I need to, I, I got to move, I got to move some money to my pay now, or um, there's some money in the profit account, but I want to go buy um, X, Y, Z tool. So you're going to move that into your operating expenses or there's $10,000 in your tax account. Nah, I don't think our taxes are really going to be that high this year. So you're going to move that. So what I had to do and, and what I'm highly recommending you do is go to a completely separate bank that you cannot go to physically. It's gotta be hard to do. And here's what I want you to do. So again, your money flows in here. You're then gonna move your percentages. And then the second step is you're going to, and I have this set up to be automated any money that comes in the profit account on the day that I transfer it is instantly sweeped to another bank account. Instantly sweeped. The same thing with the tax account. And I promise you that if you leave your tax money in one of these main bank accounts, you will eat into the tax money. Even if you put it aside, you're going to find, you're going to think that it's yours you're going to move it back into owner's pay. You're going to move it into profit. You're going to find something to buy. But when I found that when I sweep it to a second bank, I, I've completely forgot how much money I even have in the tax account. So the tax account continues to build. It's at another bank. You can collect interest on it, but I, you don't use that for anything else. You're not investing it or buying Bitcoin or anything like that. It's moving into to a safe account on autopilot. So the other piece to this is the frequency. So maybe think, well, how often do, do I need to do this? So you're going to do two different things. So you're going to do this one here. So you're going to do, well, I'll do the quarterly one first. Um, so quarterly, 
usually I like to do the, the, it's called the 10 and 25, but I'll tell you the quarterly piece first. So as you're moving your money twice a month, and I'll tell you the exact days to do them if you didn't already see the slide, you're going to move the money twice a month. Quarterly, you're going to do a couple things. You're gonna pay your tax estimates, which that took me years and years to do. I always would pay my taxes at the, not even the end of the year, I would pay them after I learned what my tax liability was. So I, I was paying after the fact and then paying interest and things like that. So you're gonna pay your tax estimate. The second piece is that every penny in profit is going to go to you. You're gonna cut yourself a check and you're going to do something fun with it. The biggest rule out of all of this with the profit first mentality, you cannot pour a penny of that money back into the business as Josh mentioned earlier. Your profit is not meant to go back in the business. So personally speaking, um, I was in Toronto last week um, and my quarterly profit payment paid for the entire trip. Um, so I took that and so our, the quarterly payments are for fun things. They're not for you to go buy a new iPad or something for the business or you to hire a graphic designer to redo something. They are for fun stuff. Uh, vacations, things being done around the house. Again, they, they have to be something that has absolutely nothing to do with your business. Now, some people have challenged me and said, well, uh, Michael, I mean, what if it's a new computer? Or, or, we're all using our, our laptops on a daily basis. I, I would challenge you to not be buying a computer or anything work related. So that's the quarterly. You're gonna pay your tax payment. You're then going to take your profit. So that money was already in a separate bank account, collecting a little bit of interest. The third thing you're going to do is you're going to adjust the numbers based on how things are going. So do you need to adjust your profit number? Do you want to take the profit number from 5% to 6% or from 1% to 2%? So you're going to quarterly adjust the numbers based on how things are going at the business. Now, when I'm saying adjust, I'm not saying that you should be adjusting anything negatively. So going back to this slide, I don't want to see you, if you started off with taking 5%, you should not be going the other way back. You shouldn't be, well, the next quarter we didn't really do as well, so I'm going to take 4%. Your profit and your owner's pay should not be getting adjusted down. They should be getting adjusted up in accordance with these particular stats as a guideline. You can adjust this number. I adjust slightly depending on my profitability. So if I find that um, my op expenses were a little bit higher, I might adjust my tax percentage to 12% or 10%, but I typically keep a consistent 15. I might adjust my operating expenses to 28 and then bump two more percent to go to profit. And then you get right back in the rhythm of your money comes in and then you're transferring and allocating all based on the percentages. And you're going to do this twice a month and you're going to do it on the 10th and the 25th. And you might, well, what, what's the secret sauce behind that? They, Mike Michalowicz and the team at Profit First, did, they tried all different kinds of days and studies. These are the two best days to do it. So all of your income stays in your income account until the 10th. You move based on those percentages on the 10th. So your income should go to zero. And then all the income that comes in from the 11th through the 25th, you're then going to move those numbers accordingly thereafter. So you're going to make those transfers twice a month, 10th and the 25th. So if $10,000, let's say you got five grand that's sitting in the account by the 10th, you're going to then transfer that five grand to the percentages. So if you're doing 10, 5% profit, you're going to do two and a half two and a half. Does that make sense? Yeah, there's a couple questions here if I should. Yeah, I know there's, yeah, I know there's been, for you. been a lot of questions here. So let, um, me, let me interrupt, interrupt, I'll read these questions off and then we can keep, we can keep going. 
Uh, Scott Andreessen, what's up, man? He's saying, can you please give recommendations of credit unions or banks for use for each types of these accounts, profit, tax, et cetera, that you recommend? Um, got it. Uh, so let me do this. Let me, there's, I think, two or three more slides. Let me finish the slides and then okay. I'll oh, crank uh, through some questions if that works okay. Perfect. Um, I usually get a question around debt. Um, so, and a couple of these people have asked, how do you handle like retirement accounts, things like that. Um, so I also use profit first in my personal accounts. So same thing. So my owner's pay then gets distributed, um, accordingly so that I'm moving a portion of my owner's pay, um, and I'm putting money aside for investing. I do the same thing with my owner's pay. Uh, I call it a slush fund instead of profit. Uh, I'm still getting the profit money, but I, I will pull a small percentage from my owner's pay as well. Um, but when you'll have other accounts, that's if you're typically then having to factor in debt. The key with debt is we're looking to freeze it. So if you're like, Michael, these percentages look great, but I've got 70K in an Amex and I got to work that down, then we just need to look at the numbers and start to adjust accordingly. So we might have to lower the profit a little bit, look at are there some ways to cut back on OPEX. Um, th there's lots of different ways to look at it. Um, but the debt piece, it, it's not you're going to instantly eliminate it. Doing profit first will start to eliminate your debt. Uh, but the biggest piece with this is we have to freeze it. So if you've got 70K in debt, we need to start coming up with a plan so that that 70K is going to go to 68. So there has to be a plan in place. and we cannot by the allocations we're going to have to look at those and make sure that it, it very well might mean well we've got to crush your op expenses and instead of it being 30 percent, it's got to be 15 and 15 needs to go to your debt and you might have to do more of the work and get rid of some of your freelancers or one of your team members pick up the slack to pay for the debt because you're not going to get out of that debt so uh, a lot of different ways to kind of slice that um Obviously, this is the biggest piece. So I, I know this, it, it, some people might think it sounds simple. Some people might think it sounds complex. Uh, it works. Um, I mean, I, I am taking more profit than I ever have been. Uh, I believe I'm up to 12%. Uh, my owner's pay is substantial. I have money set aside for taxes. Everything is, is locked and loaded. Um, the piece is you got to stick with this. Like you can't just start it for a month and, and stop doing it. Um, so I, I like to, you know, I'll skip over that little slide, end with this story, and then I'll, I'll tell you about if there's some ways that I could help you, and then I'll take as many questions as, as we have. Um, so this is a, a, a real quick story from a Russian sub, and I, I read about this, I believe it was in the year 2000, and it was a Russian sub that went out for a mission, it was kind of a test mission, 118 people aboard, and very, very rapidly, they started encountering issues. And rather than seeking help, they said, no, 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 we're, we're fine. We're, we're going to get this stuff figured out. So they had the U.S., they had Britain, they had a variety of other allies offering. They, they had, literally was a, a U.S. submarine that was somewhat nearby. Hey, we, we see that you're having issues. Can we help? No, no, no. Everything is good. Everything is great. And after three and a half, four days, they finally said, yeah, we need some help. But unfortunately, after three and a half, four days, 118 people on board had perished. And I don't share that to be a morbid story, but it's more of those, I, I know a lot of you, and I was in the same bucket, you might be like, Michael, I, I'm embarrassed by how much money I'm making or my debt. I've been there. We've all been there. I mean, I'm sure that Josh had a, a fair amount of debt when he got started. He wasn't paying himself the salary that he is now and taking these beautiful vacations with his family. We've all, even if you're, I've seen agencies that are doing three, four, five, six million, the owners paying them themselves $50,000 and taking very little profit. I mean, it, we've all had certain circumstances and situations, but the key is getting some help. So I've got a small offer for seven figure agency people. Um, and I'll tell you what that is. And then again, I'll happy to take any questions. So, um, the first step is, and this is what I did on my business. I hired a profit first consultant before I became one. Uh, it's a profit assessment. So uh, essentially what this assessment 
It's, I want to phrase things like we do as marketers and benefits. Um, the biggest one at the bottom, it's a clear plan to have more profit. So I'll actually take a look at all of your books, all your numbers, and we've got some really intense and amazing software that allows me to plug everything in and that it actually will spit back all the numbers. So where are you today? So of the percentages, where are you today? And there's some methodical ways to doing this. And then what I'll actually do is then put together a plan of here's your action plan, a customized report of how to get to the ideal percentages. So if I'm saying you need to be at 50% based on your books, I'm not just going to say, well, you need to stop spending money on X. I can very quickly start to give you a plan of for the next three months, here's what you're going to do. You're going to adjust your percentages here. Here are some things that you want to tweak and change. Um, so that's the place that I always start with. Um, I have to do something from a marketing standpoint of um, normally this. And, and so rather than doing the whole triple X's and things like that, um, it's 997. And I'm rather than having a big fancy funnel, um, I, I'm making it very, very simple. Um, I'm only going to take 10 agencies. And I'm not using scarcity like a lot of us use. Oh, we're only taking on one person in one location, even though some of you do do that. But um, so I obviously, like you, I've got a full-time agency. Um, I've launched a side business called No Joke Financials. Um, so my current agency is No Joke Marketing. Uh, the financial kind of outsource CFO stuff is No Joke Financials. Um, but I'd love to take on 10 agencies and help you. So the step one um, is this profit assessment. Again, it's a customized report of this is what you need to do to be more profitable. Um, I'll also give you a couple of tax tips and things like that. I shared uh, one with Josh earlier before we started um, that will save I mean, Josh in particular, probably at least three to five grand in taxes. Um, but it, it'll save every one of you at least a thousand dollars in taxes. So um, send me a direct message on Facebook, Michael Tasner, say I want more profit. Um, I'll send you a confidentiality clause so you know that I'm keeping everything confidential uh, because you are giving me your financials. Um, it'll take me about two weeks to put together the custom reports for you. So that's my little mini sales pitch and not a hard close by any means, but uh, obviously I'd, I'd love to help you in some way uh, that I can. And again, I am a certified profit first professional. So I'm not just an agency owner that's like doing this half hazard, half, half hazardly. Uh, I'm one of the hundred certified profit first consultants. I believe I'm the only one that's only focusing on agencies. So um, that's what I have. Um, so I know there were a variety of questions. Um, happy to to take any questions. Uh, uh, do you want me to start at the top, Josh? You want me to start at the bottom? Yeah, by all means. I mean, if you, if you go ahead and you take them in the order you think makes most sense. Uh, I'll, I'll start with Jay. I didn't. Jay, I guess, is uh, is from Buffalo, also. So I'll, I'll have to throw in some bocce pizza and a Tim. Ho yeah, I've got my Tim Hortons here. I've got like four Tim Hortons cups on my desk from from the last two days. So um, happy to throw something in for you. <laughs> um, can this be done while running the agency on a credit card? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, I. All of, I mean, all of my income comes through by charging credit cards. All of my expenses go through on a credit card. I pay all my contractors on a credit card, um, but I'm paying my Amex bill from OPIC, from the OP expense account. Um, so it can be, it, as long as you're not paying your credit card bills, they can't be coming from the income account. That's the whole point of if you're, you've got that OPEX account for your, various operating expenses, whether they're um, freelancers or, or not, it's got to be coming out of that OPEX account. Uh, how are you paying daily, weekly expenses between these, these dates? So um, I'm not there. I mean, they're expense. Let me clarify. So I'm making the transfers twice a month. So I'm transferring money from my income account to OPEX to profit to owners pay, et cetera. And there definitely are credit card charges that are coming in every single day of the month. Um, but it's, I think that maybe Jay, what was your, your question of you can pay expenses th throughout the month um, if they're hitting a credit card, but you shouldn't be cutting checks 
on the fifth of the month. You shouldn't be cutting checks on the 19th. So if you're paying your rent, for example, you should be paying your rent. All of, you should move your money from income to OPEX on the 10th, and then you're cutting that check accordingly. If there are certain things that have to get paid on certain days, I'll let it hit a credit card. So all my monthly subscriptions and things like that, but I'm then paying twice a month. So I actually pay my credit card bills twice a month right from my OPEX so that it's not then moving all the way to the end of the month as well. So I'm, and I'm not paying the entire balance off. I'm paying from the previous balance, but I'll pay 50%, 50% accordingly. Um, Someone asked, where does retirement fund fall? So um, that can be a separate account. So that is one of the other accounts that I have of my 12. Um, So we just opened up uh, six or so months ago, a 401k for our team. And I added um, another another allocation where I'm allocating to OPEX, I'm allocating to company 401k, my 401k. So similar to profit, I have that actually coming out first as well. So my 401k is getting funded before OPEX. Everything that benefits me as the owner is getting funded before everything else. Because it's that whole... The Russian sub example of we will someday help is going to come. You're, you're well at the end of the year, I'll transfer whatever's left over. It's not going to happen. I, I've been there and I've done that. And you, well, I'll, I'll if I got five, five K, uh, there were two or three years I didn't contribute any. My accountant said, well, you can save some taxes by putting money into a SEP. I'll say, well, I don't really have any money left over because I should have been putting 500 bucks a month, for example, for 12 months and then figure out a way not to. And it goes back to Parkinson's law. If the money's there, then I'm going to know, well, I got six grand. So maybe I'm going to go buy XYZ course, for example. Um, someone asks, so the expense actually becomes um, an expense budget. Then you pay all expenses and employees. So I, some people have it where um, they are paying all of their um, team from OPEX, from that OPEX account. Uh, again, twice a month. Um, I have another account where I'm, I'm moving percentages for payroll as well. So then my OPEX account is adjusted to be a little bit lower. Um, but it would, in simplicity, we don't want to overcomplicate it too much from the beginning. Uh, you want to start off where you've got these accounts. Um, and I do definitely recommend the outside accounts as well. Um, so that you're moving the profit money and the tax money so you're not jumping back in that piggy bank. Uh, recommendations, credit unions and banks. Um, so I, I always, uh, I, I personally um, look for whatever the biggest credit union in the area is. So I, I'm in New York and SEFQ, State Employees Federal Credit Union is the biggest. The reason that I like to look for the biggest credit union is they tend to have the best business banking services. Um, the one-off uh, credit unions that have one location, uh, they traditionally can't rival um, a, a, a huge bank. Uh, I personally am anti-bank, so all of my stuff is with credit unions. Um, I, the fee, like I don't pay any fees on any of these 12 accounts. I collect interest, I collect rewards. Uh, there's zero, zero fees, none. Um, so credit unions tend to be a lot more cost-effective. And if you don't have a, a big agency, it's you know $10 a month times five accounts times 12 months, that starts to add up. I mean, it's, that's $50 I'd rather have in your pocketbook that as profit rather than having to, to pay it to a bank. Uh, let's see if there's other questions here. Mark Lewis is asking, how do you handle media spend in, in terms of like, Facebook ads and Google AdWords ex- expense, assuming, I guess in Mark's case, he, he bills the client the full amount and then spends from that for their spend. Sure. So I, I, that, that to me is an OPEX. So I make sure that when I'm looking at what my re, that's the whole, why I had real revenue. Um, when I said the percentages of real revenue, you really can't count if they're paying you $1,500 a month and $500 is going for ad spend. I'm only counting a thousand dollars as real revenue, and that entire five hundred dollars I moved to OPEX. 
Uh, that's another trap that I've seen agency owners fall in, especially the ones that are getting the ad spend that you're essentially banking and running your business off of the ad spend and kind of credit card arbitrage. And that's how you get into those 70 K Amex bills. And then you're paying 19% interest. And so it's, we've got to remove the temptations. We, we got to remove that stuff instantly. Yeah, that, exactly. Uh, Scott's saying all my, all my expenses and income are linked to one account, right? So that's that one big serving plate. So I'm giving my merchant account a new banking account to start transferring recurring income question mark um, and keeping my current account as the OPEX. So is yes. it to set up a new income account or keep your main account as the income account and create a new OPEX expense account? Yes. So I, I kept my main account as my income, but if you want to keep it clean, the cleanest way to do this is to simply set up a new bank account. So if you're running reports and things like that, the other reason I, I typically suggest a clean account is um, if you're using online bill pay, it's very easy to fall back in those old habits of just logging into your income account and doing bill. And you're like, oh, geez, I forgot I shouldn't have shouldn't have paid uh, X, Y, Z from the income account. So I, I personally kept my my main account as my income account. But what I've been advising people to do is a new account from scratch. Uh, that income account can be linked to your merchant. So mine's linked to all my automatic payments go there. And then any checks that I get, everything goes to that one income account. And then again, the 10th and the 25th, I swipe a hundred percent of the money. So that's the other key to this is that you're not leaving anything. The income account goes from whatever's in there goes to zero until the, the next day more money comes in. Everything is getting filtered out. Um, Scott, you, you definitely still need QuickBooks. So th this is, and there's obviously uh, some setup that you need to do in QuickBooks for reconciliation and things like that. Uh, that's definitely stuff that we can help you with as well. Yeah, this, you still need accounting software, um, and you can you can manage multiple accounts right within QuickBooks. It's not a not a problem, and it will pull in and kind of match all of your transfers. But exactly. Yeah, definitely. Still yeah, got, got to still have QuickBooks, and you still need your, rec your reconciliations. But the big thing here is again your the whole piece of this is you're taking your profit first. You're, you're actually serving yourself before everything else gets eaten up. So, so I know that we're uh, about eight minutes over time, um, but I, I really appreciate that everyone stuck in here. Thanks, Josh, so much for having me. Um, look forward to hearing from some of you. Hopefully, we fill up those 10 slots pretty quickly. Um, just kind of my, my way to help, and there's some ways I can pay it forward. I'm more than happy to do so. I thought, I thought this was great, uh, Michael. Thank you so much for taking the time to share. You know, whether you wind up hiring Michael or not, right now you've got some good insights on how, how Profit First works uh, from a very tactical level, right? You set up these accounts, you transfer the accounts, um, and you make it part of your, your business operating system, right? You choose to choose to take a profit as opposed to, you know, thinking someday magically a profit's going to appear within your business. So um, I got a lot of a lot of notes from this. I appreciate you sharing, and I've I've gone through the Profit First book, and I've sat through Michael McCallowitz's version of it, you know, three or four times now. So thank you very much for sharing your unique perspective on this. And um, Jay's asking, as part of your deal, do you help with the software setup as well? Oh, we can we can talk about that one offline. Um, we'll at least we'll at least move you in the right direction if you need help with bookkeeping and things like that. That's another conversation, but it, initially it's, let's get you to making more profit. Let's get your op, op expenses in control. Let's start to lower your taxes, help you lay the foundation. Um, and then we can take it from there. So be sure to reach out, tag Michael. Thank him for sharing his insights. Thank him for sharing some of these cool, cool tactics on getting more profitable. And uh, we will, we will talk to you guys later. See you guys. Thanks, Michael.